Dear students, today let me discuss the growth and development of Indian anthropology so as to have a very clear understanding of how anthropology developed in India. Anthropology in India was introduced by anthropologists from England who came to India and collected data on Indian populations and prepared monographs on them. During the second half of the 19th century, a number of monographs on tribal and other communities were written by the British administrators and anthropologists. A small number of Indian anthropologists who were being trained by the British to assist them in their anthropological work began to appear on the scene. By the beginning of the 20th century, departments of anthropology were set up in various universities, which in time produced large numbers of students. Since then, anthropology as an integrated science of men made a headway and today there are over 30 departments of anthropology across the country. The setting up of the Asiatic Society of Bengal in 1774 by Sir William Jones is a landmark in the history of anthropology in India. Under this organization, a number of anthropological works were conducted and many were printed in the journal of the society. Attempts have been made to review the growth of anthropology in India by S.C. Roy, D.N. Majumdar, G.S. Gurie, S.C. Dubé, N.K. Bose, L.P. Vidyarthi, and Surjit Sinha, etc. The growth of Indian anthropology has been divided into different periods by notable anthropologists in various ways. S.C. Roy classified the growth of anthropology in India in terms of the sources of publications such as magazines, handbooks and monograms etc. and the nationality of the authors. According to S.C. Dubé, this growth can be classified in three phases. First, compilation and publication of volumes on tribes and castes. Second, detailed monographic studies of individual tribes mostly based upon personal observation and third, quantitative advancement and qualitative achievement. N.K. Bose divides the growth of anthropology in India into three phases. First, encyclopedia of tribes and castes. Second, descriptive monographs and third, analytical studies of village, marriage and family, caste and civilization, etc. D.N. Majumdar divided the growth of anthropological researches in India into three historical periods. The first, formulation phase, 1774 to 1911. Second, constructive phase, 1912 to 1937. And third, critical phase, 1938 to present day. Putting all the views together, the growth of anthropology in India can be briefly summarized as the beginning formative period, second the constructive period and third the analytical period. Now let me discuss the formative period. Majumdar is of the opinion that this phase ended in 1911 while according to Vidyarthi it extended to 1920. This period seems to have been characterized by an emphasis on tribes, a natural history approach and descriptions of the diversity of customs with the publication of a variety of encyclopedias on tribes and castes. Sir William Jones started Asiatic Society of Bengal in 1774 as its founder president to study nature and man in India. Since then, the British administrators, missionaries, travellers and anthropologists studied Indian tribes and published their accounts in the Journal of Asiatic Society of Bengal in 1784, Indian Antiquary in 1872, 
Journal of Bihar and Urissa Research Society, 1915, and Man in India, 1921. Accounts were also published in a series of districts, gazetteer, handbooks, and monograms on tribes. Important contribution to the study of Indian tribes was made by British administrators such as Risley, Dalton, O'Malley, Russell, Thurston, and Crooks. Campbell, Lantham, and Risley published general books on Indian ethnology. These were followed by detailed accounts of specific tribes by Briggs, Shakespeare, Girdle, Mills, Perry, and Brixen. Apart from ethnographic reports, listings of customs, and administrative reports, there were also land revenue settlement reports of Dalton, Buchanan, and Lord Baden Powell that gave a more realistic functional idea of Indian rural society. Some missionaries who also made important ethnographic and linguistic studies were P.O. Bodding, N.J. Hoffman, C.G. Seligman, B.G. Seligman, and A.R. Ratcliffe Brown. Herbert Hope Risley first published his account of the tribes and castes of Bengal in 1891. The people of India resulted after he became the head of census operations in India. In 1905, he developed a wing in the census operations that was devoted to ethnographic survey. After independence in 1947, a social studies division was added to the office of the Registrar General of India, who was in charge of the census operations in India. Indians like Nadabhai Nauroji, G.K. Gokhale, R.C. Dutt, M.G. Ranade, Raja Ram Mohan Roy, K.C. Sen, Ram Krishna Paramhansa, and Swami Vivekananda, who were not anthropologists, also influenced the discipline. According to Majumdar, the constructive period began in 1912 and ended in 1937. In 1919, social anthropology was included in the curricula of Bombay University in sociology. In 1921, Department of Anthropology was started at Calcutta University. In 1947, in the University of Delhi. In 1950, in Lucknow. And in 1952, in Guwahati. Other universities having departments of anthropology included Sagar, Pune, Madras, Ranchi, Dibrugar, Utkal, Ravi Shankar at Raipur, Karnataka, Northeastern Hill University at Shillong, Garhwal, Manipur, and so on. These centers started anthropological researches, and among those who made important contribution, to the growth of anthropology in India, the most notable were the studies of P. N. Mishra, L. K. A. Iyer, K. P. Chattopadhyay, T. C. Das, and D. N. Majumdar in the East and North India, and G. S. Gurie, Iravati Karve, L. K. A. Iyer, and A. Ayappan in the West and South India. All these scholars stimulated anthropological research and publication of articles, monographs, and books. In 1938, a joint session of the Indian Science Congress Association and the first review of the anthropological researches in India was done by the British Association. Among the most notable contribution made to anthropology during this period are the works of D. N. Majumdar, M. N. Srinivas, Veria Elwin, C. Von Furrer Hemendorf, G. W. Briggs, J. H. Hutton, and N. K. Bose. Indian anthropology during this period was characterized by ethnological and monographic studies with a special emphasis on researches in kinship and social organization. According to D. N. Majumdar, the analytical period began in 1938 and carried on to the present. 
During this phase, a shift was seen from the descriptive studies of pre-literate villages to the analytical studies of complex societies. The Americans who came to India during this period made their works famous for all time and immortalized also the names of the villages they worked in. These studies began with the work of Sir Henry Sumner Main, Sir Baden Powell, Maurice Opler, Oscar Lewis, David Mandelbaum, W. H. Weiser and Charlotte Weiser, Alan and Ralph Beals, Kathleen Goh, F. G. Bailey, Robert Redfield, W. A. Rowe, Scarlett Epstein, McKim Marriott, G. M. Castes, etc. Indian anthropologists who were included in this group are S. C. Dubey, M. N. Srinivas, A. Ayappan, D. N. Majumdar, Professor Indapal Singh, K. S. Mathur, Yogendra Singh, G. S. Gurye, etc. A large number of village study monographs were published in the 1960s through the Census of India, 1961. The first of these was L. P. Vidyarthi's study of Ghagra. A large number of data generated on a very large number of villages from all over India provided a very good baseline from which emerged other kinds of studies as well as new theoretical ideas. The work of L. P. Vidyarthi, B. K. Roy Berman, R. M. Sarkar, Vedanath Saraswati, Makhanja, A. Danda, M. K. Raha, P. K. Mishra, K. S. Singh, T. N. Madan and others is memorable. Besides, important rural studies were made by M. N. Srinivas, Iravati Karve, S. C. Dubey and D. N. Majumdar among others. Numerous papers have been published by anthropologists in India concerning first, change leading to tribal identity, integration, vanishing culture and planning, second, emergence of industrial anthropology, third, increased emphasis on tribal demography and fourth, integrated study of tribal regions. Important contribution has been made to action research, socio-psychological research and folklore researches, studies of power structure and leadership, and anthropology of religion. Many Indian anthropologists have proposed their own theories as they began to feel that a better interpretation of such complex interrelationships could be given by Indian anthropologists. An increasing interest in medical anthropology, religion, development studies, psychological studies as well as other areas is becoming more evident. It seems apparent to many that Indian anthropology has many new directions to travel in. Indian anthropologists have gained much more expertise in studying their own histories and culture. Present-day anthropology stands on the shoulders of the stalwarts who created a field of study where none had existed before. Indian anthropology has never been put together as a single event. There seems to have been a trend of looking at a version of the concept of India that involves the thinking of it as a caste, tribe, hierarchy, Hindu, villages and other such labels, which is perhaps why anthropology in India is still involved in studying such issues. One focus has always been for anthropologists to not only class themselves as Indian and the subject as useful to Indian society in the practical sense, but also to ensure that others know of this relevance of Indian anthropology. It has come a long way and only time will tell to see which direction it will move on in the future. Further researches and studies are still required in many areas for which large funds are needed. Therefore, the agenda of its funding organizations will also dictate a part 
of this direction.